Hello, it's an honour today to be speaking to you um, on behalf of the Ironbridge War Weekend and in support of Pilgrim and Bandits and uh, my name's Steve Roberts and I'm here today to talk a bit about 1940s breakfast. Uh, I've been living on the um, 1940s war time uh, ration diet for nine weeks, ten weeks now uh, and it's been very interesting. So I'm just going to just turn the uh, cooker on warm or fat. Um, I'm going to show you how to make um, bacon turnovers. Uh, quite simple really. Uh, as, as much of the food is really. Um, Housewives are very inventive with a lot of foods. Um, so yeah, um, the Ministry of Food are very keen to encourage people to have breakfast. Important meal of the day for health. Um, and something in modern day we don't really think about. And in front of me I've got some of the dishes I've been having for breakfast, it's porridge which I have quite a bit, um, wheat mealies which is just basically a wholemeal national loaf, cut into cubes about a quarter of an inch, put in the oven, moderate oven for about 10 minutes um, and then just serve with milk and a sprinkle of the sugar. That's what you know when we start your breakfast off, then they recommend <coughs> a cooked dish and here are some samples, cheese fritters, um, you can replace the cheese with uh, sardines, cooked meat, um, as far as anything really, you can be quite inventive. Uh, next to that we have what we call potato fudge and bacon, which is just basically potato, flour, seasoned with salt and pepper, mixed, mixed up and then just fried with fried bacon and there you go. Next to that, it's got just basically a cheese sandwich of mustard, and that's a, a fried cheese sandwich. So you just make your cheese sandwich up, a bit of mustard, and bang bang the fried bacon. Now, we'll finish with a bit of a sweet thing, in this case, it's a bit of jam and butter on bread. You could have toast, uh, margarine, any sort of jam, marmalade, or sweet spread, which is quite interesting. Come for another day. But I'll get on with this cooking, that should be hot enough. What I'm going to do using a bit of bacon because I'm only doing one so I'm just going to start frying my bacon up and while that's frying nice and gentle turn the heat down a bit I always seem to have cooked on low heat so that's like with the fuel wrapping then we're going to get some flour and a pinch of salt Bit of pepper, pinch pepper, and if you want like this one, a uh, good pinch of herbs, mixed herbs, uh, and then I always use a fork for this, you'll see why in a bit. Just give that a bit of a mix in. Then we add a bit of milk, because we're looking for a mixture um, that is like um, a dough you'll make scones from. But while the milk's there, I'll mix, mix it with the fork. Keep me on the bacon, I don't want it too crisp. So I'll just mix all that up. And we're looking for a, a doughy mixture that we can roll out. But as it's coming up and getting a bit more... I think we need to do, do um, a bit more flour in that. I think it's a bit too wet. Mix it in. There we go, that seems right. And they always wipe the bowl. That was one thing I've always been told that whatever is in the bowl, you, you, you wipe it up and, and stuff and add everything. Okay, I'm just going to uh, just turn this button, turn this bacon over. Want to, want to roll out to about a quarter of an inch really. 
but we're going to be using a, a three inch cutter uh, this one's a double one which is, I think they call it fluted in the straight so I want the straight and I want two pieces of flour which is enough Um, yeah, it's been it's been interesting these last nine weeks. Um, roasted sheep's heart, stuffed heart. That was uh, an experience. It was quite nice. Um, you know, I suppose the thought of it in our diets today was a bit. Uh, you know. Okay, so there we are. We have two rounds of the dough. I'm just going to flip this again once more. Um, and then what, what we need to do now is you get lightly spread water, or brush water I'm sure to say, onto your dough. Like that. Okay, and look now, I've just timed it right because my bit of bacon is ready. Turn that off. Alive, and then we pop the bacon onto the into the middle of the one of the pieces. Then we get the second piece and turn it over, and that's why we wet the the dough so it sticks together. And then we just pop it in the pan and fry that up. Um, probably two three minutes either side, I, I would say. But uh, depends how much heat you've got. Just seeing if I've still got gas. Um, it is quite interesting when you research um, the way people ate in the in the wartime. Um, I've only sort of really researching it. It was just when we came to lockdown, I thought I'd take the opportunity of not doing the events to have a go, uh, and I was going to have a go for a month. Um, but I started enjoying it that much. I went in. I, I went on further. Um, and into my third month now, um, and my interest for the, the food has, has really grown. Um, I'm, I'm really surprised how much taste you can put into the wartime diet. I mean, we hear stories that um, the food a bit bland or something, but they didn't have a big variety because of what they could get from the stores, so the shortages, the rationing, and, and everything like that. So, so it was a bit, um, a bit hit and miss really. Uh, I'm just going to turn this for a minute. Thank you. Um, but if you've never ever tried any, I recommend it. But th th these recipes are out of this book, uh, Eating for Victory, which is uh, facts of, Bill, of all the Ministry of Food leaflets. Uh, and that was one of the first books I, I actually brought um, to have a go at the cooking. Uh, I, I love cooking anyway. As, my friends would know. Uh, last year I missed quite a bit because I've been friend in the kitchen, which I love. I love just love cooking. I'm not the best, but there you go. Um, so yeah, it, it's been very interesting. Um, there's quite a lot I could tell you, but uh, for the time I have at the moment, it's uh, going to be pushing it really. But uh, yeah, please have a go. Get that book if you can and have a go. Uh, there are some good books you can get. There's a lot of um, reproductions of 1940s cookbooks, uh, which I've got with me now that are in my office. Um, you know, it's uh, it's well worth having a go. If you're interested in 1940s and you're a reenactor, have a go. Research the food. And next time you're on an event and you want them extra points when you're getting judged, do some 1940s food. Calcutta curry is one that I've had, which is basically a fish curry um, using uh, any sort of white fish um, and it, it's uh, really nice. I've had it a couple of times now um, and I'll, I'll produce the recipe at some point whether I video or not because I've never done anything like this before as you probably could tell because of the way I am but uh, you know it's, uh, it's yeah it's uh, really good really really good um, yeah I suppose the Calcutta curry is my favourite um, don't have a lot of tinned stuff. I did it first, uh, but as my research went on, a lot of tinned fish and that was on points. Um, I think it was 20 points. I could be wrong. 
top of my head. Um, so you wouldn't have a lot of grade 3 salmon, I know it was about 8 points. Uh, the Ministry of Food produced the grade 3 salmon. Um, some foods I don't fancy, uh, there's a, 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 is it a casserole from the States, which was at least Lend, which had whale meat, so I, I don't fancy that. Uh, and the other thing I've seen felt as obvious, uh, the butchers selling horse meat. Well, horse meat was put into dog food uh, before the war, um, and then as shortages come on with the meats and everything, I started putting inside up, say, for human consumption, and was selling horse meat. Um, you'll notice that there's not sausages mentioned for breakfast, that's because it was hard to get. If you knew your butcher, you'd be okay, but then again you don't know what's in the sausage. If you did have a sausage, you could have had horse meat, anything that they, they would have got their hands on then. Uh, this is coming up nice in there. Um, so there we go. It's all right, if I go I'll get it out. Oh. <laughs> it's because where I'm cooking, where I'm cooking is uh, got a, uh, a smoke alarm rather than a heat sensor. It's because of the room and stuff like that, so I do apologise about that. But uh, there we go, one bacon fritter, really sweet, really nice, beautiful. The mixed herbs give it that special taste. Um, and one thing I want to try and do is with the fritters, he's probably put a bit of mixed herbs in with the fritters one day. Um, because I'm writing uh, a lot about the original foods and that. Um, you know, I'd, I'd try to stick to the uh, normal recipes. I hope that's been quite a bit of an insight. So I've never done anything like this before. Uh, it's just that my good friend Ben um, uh, asked me to, to do something. Um, and because it is in support of the Pilgrim Bandits, which is a very important uh, charity for us, I agreed. And um, there we go. Thank you for watching. Uh, I'm just going to get ready now. I'm going to have uh, lunch later with uh, Lord Walton. Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. Uh, I've got to go and get ready now because I'm having Lord Walton pie for tea. Thank you for watching and enjoy your bank holiday Monday. Bye for now.